Oh, and while we're at it, thanks again for the tip to see the Music Man at Walnut Street Theater last night. Glad you enjoyed it. Thank you for meeting up with me afterward at Wednesday Karaoke at Finn McCool's. What a blast. Although they should provide drinks on the house if we ever have to sit through bad versions of Don't Stop Believing and Living on a Prayer Again. Those songs are so played out they should provide drinks on the house even if those songs are performed adequately. L. O. L. You were right. Kevin Gilper is a peachy DJ. You were also right that Adam Taxon wouldn't show up. I'll bet that old fart went to bed early. Ha ha ha. He probably checked his 41-year-old ass in early into the CZZ motel. Probably was dreaming he'd wake up at 4 a.m. and see an out-of-nowhere Facebook friend request from some green-eyed girl he hadn't been in contact with but whom he had a crush on when he was like 14 and going to visit his grandparents in Hollywood, Florida. Yeah, probably dreaming he'd hear from some early teenage years babe from when the Berlin Wall was still up. How far-fetched is that? R. O. F. L. M. A. O. But, anyhow, there are much more important things to discuss. It's going to be cold the next few days, and I need a book to read. Also, I can't believe we still have over a month to wait. A month? Until what? The Super Bowl? Who cares? The Eagles are horrendous. Even the Steelers blew it this year. So I'm not that into this postseason. No, not the Super Bowl. Although you should join me on the Seattle Seahawks bandwagon. Russell Wilson is the man. Oh, you mean Wing Bowl 21 on Friday, February 1st at 6 a.m. at the Wells Fargo Center in South Philly? Actually not. I can't get that into that this year. My boo, Kenzo Kevin also known as Kevin Richmond laid an egg in his qualification stunt. He failed in his attempt to eat 10 peanut butter sandwiches and a quart of milk in 4 minutes. There are still a bunch of other hot guys you can root for. What about US Mail? A.K.A. Dave Goldstein. And Damaging Doug. A.K.A. Doug Can Oven. And Oig Koig, A.K.A. John Bradley. And Rick the Manager, A.K.A. Rick Russo. Yes, I think one of those guys will win this year. After all, if the Los Angeles Clippers can dominate the NBA, why not? The bad news is that, in his qualification stunt, Damaging Doug failed, in his attempt to eat two pounds of brisket and a pound of jalapeno poppers in four minutes. The good news is that Oikoik was successful in eating two Wawa gobblers in two minutes. U.S. Mail and Rick the manager apparently have not yet attempted their stunts. But I wasn't even talking about Wing Bowl anyhow. So... What is it that you were talking about? Girlfriend, have you had a few too many drinks? You must have overlooked that the Westminster Dog Show takes place February 11th and 12th in Madison Square Garden. Duh. I must have blacked it out because I was salty that a Peking East got best in show last year. R-O-T-F-L-M-A-O. We're totally there. But in the meantime, I need a good book for this weekend. Preferably one about dogs. And, no, not Old Yeller. Been there, done that. The one to go with, I think is Shepherd Girl, A Dog Story. I've read the first 35 pages, and it's great so far. Whom is it by? A woman from Northern Virginia. Her name is Cat L. Needham. A book about a dog by a woman named Cat. Shut. Up. Sort of like how John Steinbeck's Book of Mice and Men has a dumb giant character named Lenny Small. But what's it about? Well, the funny thing is that Cat L. Needham claims to have always been more of a cat person than a dog person. Or at least more of a cat person than every type of dog except German Shepherd's person. Again, I'm only up to chapter 6, but it's extremely well written so far. She's very clever and has witty insights. I mean, it's not that outlandish a plot. She finally goes forward with her dream of getting herself her own German Shepherd and then tries to raise the dog, whose name in this case is Athena. With a book like this, it's all in the writing, and she's an excellent writer. So far it seems that Athena as a puppy is helping make the writing a bit easier due to behavior that no one will confuse with that of one of those perfect German shepherds you see working with police or leading the blind. Great, I'll check it out. I like German shepherds well enough, although my favorite breed of all is greyhounds. Oh, I know you're in the middle of yours, so I won't ask to borrow your copy. 
I can buy Shepherd Girl a dog story by Cat L. Needham on Amazon? Indeed, you can. By the way, it's a quick read, so let me give you one more book tip.